Welcome in yet again. This is another episode, the sixth episode, Kennedy McCoy, Grant Wiley, you name it, famous mountaineer that wore number six, <laughs> episode of our video podcast at WVSports.com, which we've so humbly titled Musings from the Mountains. I am Keenan Cummings. I happen to be the managing editor for WVSports.com. And I'm Patrick Kotnick. I'm the staff writer at WVSports.com. If you've tuned in before, you know what we try to do is bring you a little bit of insight, a little bit of reaction, other other items that kind of kind of piqued our interest, either from practice or from interview sessions. No practice today. There was practice. We just weren't privy to see what was happening. Um, they did practice. It was not open. It was not available to the media. But that doesn't mean we don't have a few interesting items to talk about. We were able to talk to defensive assistant coaches um, outside of Vic Coning who spoke the other day. So if you go down the list, you got Blake Seiler, who coaches inside linebackers. Al Pogue handles your outside linebackers. Jordan Leslie on the defensive line. And Jam Jamila Dye, who handles cornerbacks. Um, those four were made available to us. And off the bat, um, people are always excited when they hear the words position change. Several of them that, that we were able to learn about. Um, one is in, in the secondary. It's actually a flip-flop. Tyke Smith goes from Spear, which is what he had been playing, to one of the safety spots, while Dante Bonamico goes from the safety spot to the Spear. Mm -hmm. Another interesting one that caught my attention was Charlie Benton was slated to play Bandit in the spring. Uh, he had been injured, if you remember. He got hurt in the Tennessee game last year after 14 snaps. They wanted him to kind of line up there, see what was happening. Um, the emergence of one player, which I'll get to later, Help West Virginia move things around. So they put him back inside a spot that Blake Siler believes he's more natural at, and, and I do think that that'll probably pay off for him. As for the safeties, Patrick, you were you were able to sit down with Coach Pogue. Mm -hmm. I was, and like I said, that was one of the first things he addressed was uh, the position change with Tyke Smith. Uh, he started out, they like said he was working with Spear. Now he's now he's uh, been moved to safety. Uh, really, he's just a natural fit for the safety position. That's exactly what he said. His natural fit for the safety spot has great cover, spill, uh, cover skills, can change direction, and he really thinks he's going to be a big-time player. They really need help at, the, at that safety position, a lot of unknowns, and there's not a lot of doubt that Tyke Smith can eventually become a big-time player for them. And it surprised me. I mean, I was surprised initially when he was slotted there. He played free safety a lot in high school, mm -hmm. played free safety at camp with West Virginia. That's where he was slotted to play under the old coaching staff. So I do think this is a good fit for him. I mentioned, yeah, I, mean, I mentioned earlier a guy that has been impressing. The number one player on the board right now, in terms of linebackers at least, which which has made a splash, I guess the most positive surprise, is Quan Darius Qualls. A um, little bit of a mystery throughout his career. He's brought in as a junior college player, could play multiple positions. He's a pass rusher by trade. Uh, West Virginia didn't get a lot out of him last year. He was hurt. So he never really was able to make an impact. Uh, in the spring, they moved him to defensive line to try to create some more pressure off the edge because of his pass rushing ability. But here's where things get interesting. In the summer, they added Reuben Jones, the, the grad transfer from Michigan, the defensive end. That allowed West Virginia to be a little bit more flexible with some of their personnel. They slid Quandarius Qualls over to that bandit outside linebacker role, and he's really taken off there. The thing that it's not necessarily a surprise that he can rush the passer. He's good, he's twitchy, he can do those things that they want at that position. What's kind of surprised Siler is how well he can drop. He can do the coverage aspects that necessarily you didn't see a lot of before. He wasn't asked to do it a lot at West Virginia when he did play. He, he didn't have a lot of that on tape. So that's been a positive surprise and really one that West Virginia is pretty happy about. Mm -hmm. um, going forward, I think that what's going to be important here in regards to linebackers, is kind of sorting out who's playing where. The Bandit, they have a, they actually have a pretty deep room now. That was a room that was scary in the spring. You had guys hurt, guys unfamiliar. They're being asked to do things they weren't asked to do in the old defense. You know, the, the way that Siler kind of described it to me is, you know, you can either run through a guy or around a guy. The Bandit, they want, him, they want them to be twitchy, go around guys. And some guys can do that, some guys can't. You have some guys that had played inside linebacker before, like Zach Samwich and Adam Hensley, that aren't necessarily not, not the body types you think of when, when you think of that pass rushing role, but you got to recruit to it. So West Virginia's got Qualls, they've got Jared Bartlett, um, they have Samwich, as I mentioned before, and Hensley. And uh, the, the really the interesting one is, is Van Darius you know, He's we've talked about him a lot. He's going to fit in, he, he's getting more comfortable. Um, Siler likes where he's at. He thinks he's going to give him something there. 
and he, it's just, the game slowed down for him. You know, he's a big, great-looking kid. He's got great length. He's a natural pass rusher. So I'm really interested to see how that position shakes out. He wants to have at least two of those guys repping, possibly three if he can. And, and Jared Bartlett's kind of your wild card as the freshman. Mm -hmm. And going back to uh, Coach Al Pogue, I asked him about the will and the spirit position. How many guys does he want ready to play by the time the season opener rolls around? He wants three at each, at will and at spear. And uh, at will, he'll have, uh, right now he says there's three guys that he thinks are about ready to play at ease. And at will, it'll be Josh Chandler, Demonte Lindsay, and X-Ray Lowe. Uh, those are guys he feels comfortable, comfortable with right now. And the same goes for at spear with Giovanni Stewart, Quantel Reigns, and now Dante Bonamico. As we just mentioned, was at safety. Now he's made the move back to spear. He repped there during the spring. But really, he said, you know, the spear position specifically is a versatile group, has, has a lot of different skill sets, and, you know, he can utilize those to their advantage. Speaking of the way people want rep, I sat down with Jordan Leslie for a little bit, too, and talked about the defensive line. Always a hot topic. The goal here is to have nine, at least nine, that they're comfortable with. They can roll in, roll out. Uh, two of those are definitely going to be the freshmen. They are not redshirting. Well, they might redshirt, but they're definitely playing. They're going to play in at least four games. Repping both of them right now at nose tackle because that's sort of the easiest position to learn and learn the responsibilities around them. Um, down the road, I think Jalen might be an end. I think JJ or, or, or Jordan Jefferson, as he's formerly known, is most likely going to stay at nose. But, but Jordan, uh, Jordan Leslie wants nine guys. Uh, he's not necessarily going to put a snap count to it. In a perfect world, if you played 90 snaps, you want 30, 30, 30. Probably not going to happen with the way teams tempo and with personnel and all the other things that go into that. But I thought that was interesting. Um, he, he did speak a lot about their development, the two freshmen. And uh, you can check that out in our insider notes. I go in depth on you know some of the things that he had to tell me. I do recommend if you, if you watch this podcast, check out those insider notes. A lot more information than what we're just saying here. And uh, definitely some good insight into the program. Tomorrow, there will be no open practice again. Uh, but it will be interesting. We will have a chance to talk to Coach Brown. Uh, I'm excited about that. I got an answer on, on the punting. Uh, Blake Siler also doubles has has the special teams coach. He wasn't he wasn't as dismissive or as pessimistic. I guess would that be fair to say? Yeah, I think it's fair. As Coach Brown was, he says he likes what he's seen out of Colton McGee. And he's got a strong leg. They've got to continue to develop there. So that's going to be something they track over the course of fall camp. But they pooch punted, they've done some things, they've been able to put the ball up. The biggest thing is hang time. They need to work on that. They've got to have three or four seconds of hang time to allow them to allow the coverage team to get down and not pop big plays, as special teams has not been a friend of the Mountaineers of late. But we will be returning tomorrow. Uh, we'll probably have a shorter one, you know, just based on what Coach Brown has to say. Uh, I do want to remind you again, if, if you do like this podcast, this video podcast, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, we will be doing this throughout the duration of the season. And again, just I want to remind you, if you enjoy this, please give our written content a try. I think you will really like what we you do. Won't regret it. You yes, won't regret we, it. we do a lot of different things, um, a lot of different feature articles. We do film breakdown once the season begins. We cover the team pretty much every step of the way. Um, the deal right now is fantastic. We're, you're basically getting a subscription for free. If you look at it this way, you're going to pay $75 for 15 months of, of our service, and we're gonna give you a $75 gift card to get gear. That, that's pretty hard to turn pretty down. Good. You, you can great. find actually information on this if you're interested, right below this video. But other than that, we'll, we'll see you again. Look forward to episode seven, the Will Greer edition.